Hey everybody, welcome back to the Heart for Games channel. I'm Tony, and a bit back we covered a prototype PlayStation 3 Super Slim, and we just sort of covered the exterior, what was different physically between the prototype and the retail release. Today we are going inside the unit itself to take a look at the debug features, and also we're going to talk about the Pro DG Target Manager software. Pro DG. Prodigy! This is hard for games. They become hard for games. First things first, let's go ahead and take a look at the debug settings on the actual PS3 itself. Now there are a ton of options here. And suffice to say, I'm not going to go over all of them, <laughs> but I'm going to go over just some of them so we can just kind of take a peek, a fun little sneak peek into what was even available here. So we have our circle button behavior, which brings us back, game type, disk boot, hard drive, patch, param. You can choose your resolutions here. Pretty self-explanatory. Boot path for development, for release. Region settings, ton of different options here. You can fake another region. HDCP, now this is great here because you can actually turn HDCP off or on. Now that is the copyright protection that disallows uh, recording, right? So if you remember the Elgato game capture device that was around and released around the time of the PlayStation 3, you couldn't record via the HDMI cable. You have to basically plug in and capture component video, uh, HD component video via the PlayStation 3 in order to actually record it. Now the PlayStation 4 allows you to toggle this on and off, but the PlayStation 3, to my knowledge, does not. So basically to record HDMI footage out of the PlayStation 3, you had to find a workaround. So for example, I would use an HDMI splitter that would strip the copyright protection just right off of it. I don't think this was originally set up uh, to prevent you from recording games. I think it was more like Netflix and Hulu and that kind of stuff that they didn't want you recording and bootlegging. However, with the PlayStation 3, you're just stuck with it, uh, at least to my knowledge. Display system storage, free space, fake free space, fake limit size, format system cache, release check mode, development mode, release mode. Tons of just different stuff here. In-game commerce debug off, fake SKU, stock keeping unit, and metadata, empty store. Core dump, crash report, boot mode, debugger mode, system software mode, release mode, and you can also change and toggle these via the Prodigy uh, target manager. This is an interesting Blu-ray disc access. You can do it via the USB. Ah, now here we go. The improper shutdown warning. Oh, so wonderful to turn this thing off. So many times it's been like, hey, did you know your power went down and uh, PlayStation 3 was running and hey, guess what? All is lost. Let me just check really quick to make sure all is not lost. Oh, all wasn't lost. Everything's okay. Uh, but if you do that again, all will be lost. So it's great because you have all of these options here for testing and debugging, but you can also just set it up to be a regular old PlayStation 3, just the retail version, with one exception, no Blu-ray movie playback. There are some testing kits out there that have the AV testing tools that will allow for Blu-ray playback and development. All that Blu-ray functionality will be there. However, this is not one of those units, so you cannot play Blu-ray movies. So here's the target manager for PS3. As you can see, I have my target here, which is my connected dev console. I had another one here, which is actually the same one, but the IP address switched on me, so that was fun. So starting up at the top here, we have add target, delete target, map file system, backup, restore, refresh status, preferences. Now I'm not gonna be talking in depth about all of these, because there are a lot of them, but we'll be talking about some of them. Sort of a basic beginner, baby's first target manager video, if you will. Target, disconnect, force disconnect, system update, reset, reset mode, and you can actually toggle the mode that it resets in, and depending on how it's toggled, you can do different things. For example, when you install a game, it has to be on a specific uh, mode. Load and run executable. 
Now you can actually do this from your own files on your hard drive, or you can load from device. So i.e. the PlayStation 3. So let's go ahead and do an install. I have Bonk Brink of Extinction on the hard drive right now. That's a canceled game from a 2011-ish uh, by Hudson before they were bought up by Konami and we did a review on it if you're interested. I'll put a link in the description below and in a card above here. But I'm gonna go ahead and delete that off the hard drive and reinstall it. Here's format hard drive, which I don't want to do. Set as default target, delete target, import properties, export properties, properties. Tools, help. This is actually nice here because there's a, a contents option that just has a ton of information if you're interested. I am shooting this a couple days before my second child is due. Uh, so not due to lack of interest, but lack of time. I haven't read a ton of this, unfortunately, but it is here. And there is a just a friggin' ton of info here. Already showcased this a little bit, but we have the console output. Let's go ahead and load up Bonk and see what happens. And it's basically one-to-one -one here. I select an option and it tells me what's happening in the console. Basically what it's accessing and what it's doing. Now here is me trying to boot up a beta of Little Big Planet 3. Now this tells me it requires an update, which I'm unwilling to do. So the whole thing just comes crashing down and this is what it looks like. Image capture, I actually don't have set up. Uh, Jeff tells me it's a little tricky to do. Uh, we were tinkering with it, it wasn't working, but uh, if you know what you're doing, like Jeff, this shouldn't be an issue. But basically, it just allows you to capture footage from your PS3, which I can do via my Elgato game capture anyway, so whatever. And if you're wondering how to actually get your PlayStation 3 or a dev PlayStation 3 hooked up to a PC, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to the tutorial that I followed in the description below. Uh, essentially, you have to connect them with an ethernet cable and you have to tinker with the settings on the PlayStation 3, but also your PC's network settings and basically allow the Wi-Fi to share its internet with the ethernet port to connect them. So that is the target manager. Uh, obviously, this is something that Jeff is much more familiar with, having utilized it. He's very intimately familiar with it. Uh, I'm still getting to know it, but it is a very powerful tool for debugging if you know what you're doing, which I don't. So thank you everybody for watching and a big thank you to developer Jeff for lending this to us. Now, my goal today was to kind of provide sort of a beginner level look of what this is because I'm still learning about it myself. If you want something more tutorial based or something more in depth, I would check out developer Jeff's upcoming YouTube channel. Once it is up and running, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the description below so that way future viewers can enjoy it. Uh, but for now, I will definitely put a link to his Twitter where he posts a ton of the prototypes in his collection. So again, big thank you to developer Jeff for allowing this to even happen, uh, for trusting me with the console, really appreciate it. And I do appreciate all of you watching as well. So take care, we'll see you next time. Pizza Hut.